Hey, Sox fans, uh, welcome back to Hot Takes and Heaters. He's Danny Miller. I'm Nick Murawski. We are the MLB-centric Chicago White Sox podcast for the uh, future Sox world. Uh, if you are uh, finding this audio uh, after a Tuesday night's ball game, I apologize, but we've got it on live right now. Danny and I are both uh, watching it in the background, as uh, others maybe if you're joining us uh uh, on the feed on YouTube or on Twitch. Uh, it's uh, it's a tight one here. Kopech is in the game. It's 5-4 Sox uh, looking to get their fourth win of the season. Uh, it's the bottom of the eighth. So as uh, we chop things up, we might be uh, talking a little bit about this game uh, and how it uh, how it goes with the cardiac kid on the mound. Danny, uh, as always, great talking with you, buddy. Yeah, and uh, as always, it's good to be here. Good to be with you on a Tuesday night yet again. Good to be heard. Good to be seen. Uh, and like you said, just uh, hoping the White Sox can uh, pull out a white knuckle win here on a another Tuesday night. Eric Fetty uh, started the game here for the Sox, and he had a great line. I think it was six innings, uh, you know, eleven strikeouts, if that's right, which is a career best for him. His stuff was moving all over the place. Uh, that cutter and, you know, mixing it up, uh, you know, in terms of the zone and, you know, got away with some stuff as you got above the belt. But uh, I like what I saw. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, the command was pretty impeccable today. Uh, Fetty figured out early in the game that uh, the strike zone was going to be just a notch high. And he threaded that needle over and over and over again, where he was right at the top of the zone and he was getting that strike called all night long. Moved the ball up and down really well, in and out really well. Had uh, had the Twins hitters just guessing on a lot of stuff over there. Uh, movement that's, was great. That's Shape difficult to do. That's tough to do, right, Danny? Was you might come into the game with an idea of where the strike zone is, and then it fluctuates on you. We've seen that quite a bit this year already. Uh, and I feel like lately, over the last few years, with umpires, and you've got to, you've got to, you know, then change up your approach a little bit, and you've got to, instead of digging your heels in maybe and being stubborn, and you know, no, that's a strike. I'm going to just keep pitching to that because eventually they might call it. If you could quickly adapt, which is which is very difficult to do, because that might be the umpire strike zone. You know, that's where it's going to be. And now I have to adjust. So that's a good point by you. Uh, not only are you trying to work your way through a major league roster, uh, a lineup, I should say, uh, you know, first time he's seen the Twins and now a, a strike zone that maybe you did not anticipate. Yeah. And, and you know, like I said, he figured it out rather quickly. Uh, I mean, I, I believe it was right in the, the top of the first. He, uh, he kind of snuck one in just above the zone. Got the call right off the bat. It was a confident call by the home plate umpire. And uh, he went right back to that pitch uh, in, in the very next pitch and put it pretty much in almost the same exact place. Got the call again. And I think right then and there, he knew where the, where the established strike zone was going to be. And he took full advantage of it. And he used it. And like I said, you know, the shape of his pitches were, it was fantastic tonight. He was moving the ball in and out of the zone up and down on the zone, and he had those guys just absolutely fooled. They were just guessing. Uh, yeah. Some really bad swings, a couple of swords out there. Just overall impressive uh, win. Or well, we hasn't gotten the win yet, but overall impressive uh, outing for Fetty tonight. Yeah, you know, I think in maybe his seventh, is this his seventh season, uh, MLB season? It's the first time he's faced the Twins, so perhaps that old magic of, you know, when the White Sox – uh, wouldn't see a pitcher before, and that pitcher looked like Cy Young against us. Maybe there was something going on uh, in that realm where Twins hitters, which Twins are scuffling as well. Twins, you know, this is the first time they're seeing Fetty, and they just they couldn't figure it out. Uh, yeah, it, it's very possible that it's it's one of those situations. You know, you kind of uh, you, you kind of hope that. I mean, Eric Fetty's been pretty solid most of the season, so you know, you might be that uh, he's going to continue to have this kind of success no matter what kind of lineup he faces. Uh, and the, the White Sox do have some difficult ones on the schedule, you know, as, as we move through the season. But, you know, I, to be honest with you, he's just been a bright spot all year. Uh, there's been times where maybe his stuff wasn't exactly perfect, 
but he still seems to get himself out of situations rather well. And I'm here for it, man. I mean, you know, he came over and we talked about it in the off season. This was a guy to keep an eye on because he had learned some new pitches. Uh, he had found some uh, help with his command and he pitched in a, in a, it's still pro ball overseas where he was at. And it's, you know, the KBO is known for uh, being an offensive league. You know, a guy's kind of just tee off on some of the pitching over there and he dominated last season. So, you know, let's hope that uh, he can remain as dominant as he was tonight throughout the season. Was it, That was a two-year deal, right? Uh, you know, when he got paid this offseason, I mean, he factors into next year, I believe. I believe he does. I believe it's two years. And if I'm not mistaken, there might even be an option for a third club option. If I, You know what? I don't have that in front of me, but I know he's yeah. here for at least two. So, you know, I don't want to say this is a get your feet wet, get reacclimated with the major leagues, you know, you know, test out some of the stuff you learned. I don't think that's his mentality. I think he's got a chip on his shoulder. He wants to prove the White Sox right and everybody else that passed on him wrong. But, you know, you, you kind of get your sea legs a little bit, maybe, and then you, then maybe you try to make hay. I don't want to I don't want to look too far ahead but let's let's be honest folks like that's what we're doing right now with a three win maybe four win team we're looking into the future uh if not this season but next and you know that, that's a guy to track this year if he's going to play into next year's uh, rotation yeah 100 uh you know there's we, we went into this season with question marks up and down the pitching staff right uh Next season, there's going to be some question marks. It's one of those things that we've talked about in the past. I think everybody and their brother is pretty much talking about how the White Sox are not a team that they're going to spend a fortune on starting pitching, right? And you're going to kind of hope that you're going to get some things out of some of these guys that are here right now that are on some, you know, friendlier deals trying to make their way and hope that they can, you know, continue to be part of that rotation next season. Now they're, let's... The one thing I do want to backtrack on, though, is there's a lot of really promising young arms in the White Sox organization right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I want to so, touch on a little bit of that uh, as we kind of, uh, you know, go throughout this episode, especially Nestrini. So don't let me forget about that. I want to get your thoughts on it. Oh, I'm sure we will. I'm sure yeah, we'll touch on a um, few of those things. But, but you know, you know it's, it's kind of difficult gotta, to get deep into it because we do have a live White Sox game. game yeah, right yeah. Maldonado just did what uh, Maldonado does. And by the way, uh, how about that, that man? Early, the, uh, team early, hero comment. Earlier, <laughs> earlier in the game, maybe two innings ago, you know, the Twins were able to tack on uh, another run because the effort for Maldonado behind the plate, what a piss poor effort. I don't know if he got crossed up or if he – didn't realize that that was the pitch that was coming, but boy, he tried to backhand a ball in the dirt, which is like a cardinal sin. Bounced off his shin guard, I, I believe. Allowed the Twins runner to get in scoring position, and the Twins just had a base knock and they scored a run. You know, again, like everybody hyped, well, maybe he's gonna, you know, he does not going to bring the bat with him this year. But you know, we got a guy that could play defense. I haven't seen anything from Maldonado that. He's a veteran, so I, I I guess it's like you don't want to do him wrong and just DFA him. I I don't I don't know if I even subscribe to that, but the less of him, the better, Danny. Yeah, I, you know I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of social media posts saying that uh, maybe Maldonado, you know, if if the White Sox really want to keep him around for this young pitching staff and the way he handles these pitchers and the confidence that he gives them when they're on the mound, by all means. Make him a, a you know, a coach of some sort. <laughs> Baseball. Coach. Give him. Give, I mean, give him that. You know, give him the. Give him the old. You know, I don't know. Put him in a. Put him in a Jim Tomey type role. It's an advisory role. A yeah, consultant, you know, perhaps a catching consultant. You know, uh, right? Exactly. Yeah. Keep him around if if you want. You know, if you want guys to be able to pick his brain and and. Help develop the rest of the young catching staff as well. You know, guys like Corey Lee and and Caro and you know Charlie, who any of those guys that are going to make their way up. Uh, you know, fine. But I'm tired of seeing them. You cannot bet. You know, oh whatever, and be I mean, in the, and, across and, and, the, the line. The slash line is just brutal. I um, mean, his OPS is like 200. Yeah. 
Yeah, we we spent uh, we spent far too much time talking about him already. Uh, guy up at the at the plate right now, Danny, is is Mendick. I mean, this is Mister TWTW. This is Mister Gamer. I mean, this guy is was on fire in Charlotte. Five straight games with a home run. They brought him up on Monday. He's done nothing but hit and hustle, and he can play multiple positions. I mean. <sighs> Are we? Is this going to be your all star? Uh, your your mandatory all star selection? <laughs> I mean, it's only one game, but right now it's looking that way, isn't it? You know, somebody has to represent the White Sox. Oh my come, goodness! Come the break, yeah. uh, and you know, if Danny Mendick does half of what he's doing right now for the remainder of the time between now and the middle of July, there's a good chance he is that guy. I, you know, I know people were were laughing like, oh, that's the one thing we get excited about is bringing Danny Mendick up, like, but. Look at look at where we're at. I mean, you have to take any small amount of positivity and five game five games in a row with a home run. Hey, that's positive in my book. And if he can spark this team uh, anywhere near uh, drawing a couple wins here and there, I don't know, boosting somebody, kicking somebody in the butt verbally, and just saying, "Hey, get it together," you know, and and maybe lead by example. I don't know if it's going to matter or anything, but it's just fun to watch. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I can't imagine that the entire lineup is going to bat at or under 200 for the remainder of the right. season, right? Like some of these guys are going to have to come alive again. No, you know, we talked about it all off season. We knew the offense was going to be bad. Some of these guys were brought in specifically for their gloves and we'll get into more of that later because that hasn't been exactly awesome either, but. I can't imagine that there's going to be an entire lineup of guys that are hitting below the Mendoza line like they are. You know, right now, at it, least mostly. Yeah. I, I, the, all the quotes that you read, whether it's from uh, Marcus Timms or, or Griffol, which I've got a couple earmarked, of course, that I always do that I'd love to read off. But it's always, you know, we got to move ahead. We got to move ahead. You know, we're going to get out of this. This isn't how it's going to be. This isn't us and, and all the political correct stuff. But. Again, I'm with you, Danny. I, I just don't think it can happen at all. I mean, we're on, we're not even out of the month of April. Like this kind of stuff can't be this bad for, you know, even two to three months. You know, no. it, I think it'll spike up, and it maybe it might go back down. I can't. I have no answers when people ask me what's going on with Vaughn, what's going on with Ben Attendee? You know, what what's going on with some of these guys that were supposed to bring this, the play the game right. And, and, you know, the defense and everything, I, I don't have answers. I either, they got the wrong guys, um, whatever they're doing, that's, you know, uh, optional, all, all their optional work. Maybe, maybe it needs to be more mandatory. Maybe there isn't accountability. I actually, I feel like that's true. There is no accountability. Yeah. Um, there's, there's, you know, I mean, that's been something that's been said, you know, since Pedro's, kind of moved in and taken over and you know he said all the right things in the media last year coming in you know we're gonna battle we're gonna we're gonna plan and be ready to you know kick your ass every night you know type of you know quotes stuff from pedro right and well here you have to see any of what he's i mean this was this was Grafol uh yesterday Stephen wilson huh Come yeah, Sp Stephen Wilson's out. gonna try to close this one i believe i believe that was part of the uh cease acquisition from uh the padres but indeed uh, uh, Grafol said, you know, I can uh, tell you this, rest assured that everything that happens in this ball club on the field, off the field, that affects us being able to win a baseball game or affects the integrity and character of this organization is being addressed. You got to take him at his word, of course. And I don't know if his character, I don't know if I'm conf confident taking him at his word based on what I've experienced the last year and a half or so. No, the, he was asked a question uh, post game the other day about pulling Maldonado out for a pinch yes. hitter. Yep, and he fired back. You know when? What? What? Where are we? What? What part of the game are we talking about? Uh, I don't remember who it was that asked the question, but the reporter told him when it was, and he said, "No, no, no, I'm leaving my catcher in the game. We had a lead then because he yeah, puts he had, the right like fingers down. That that was his justification for that. Yeah, so like." You know what? I don't want to hear that crap. That's a Tony Larusa. Uh oh. This game just has been tied yeah, up. I uh, guess who? Byron Buxton um, off of uh, Stephen Wilson in the bottom of the ninth. Uh, how about that? Yeah. Well, before we came on, 
you and I were having a little bit of a conversation. <laughs> we were. And we were. Uh, I thought it was odd that Jordan Leisure came in when he did or was pulled when he was. Uh, I, I feel like he looked pretty good in the end. He did before. look good. He probably could have stayed in for the eighth to set up for Michael, and hopefully Michael gets it done. I don't really know what Pedro's thoughts are on this. You know, you, you brought up the fact that Michael hasn't pitched in a little bit. It's been a while and, uh, since you've seen him. You I know. said, you know what, bring him in in the ninth regardless, whether you have a lead or not. But coming in in the eighth after Jordan Leisure, you know, had a decent inning the, the inning before, didn't really make me feel good about the situation. And now we got Steven Wilson and giving up dingers. Uh, yeah, and, nobody and out here. Uh, here. So uh, Twins uh, and Sox aren't very good in extra innings baseball. So, um, you know, we'll we'll be – uh, we'll be uh, on this episode, I'm assuming, for the rest of uh, this one, unless there's some crazy situation where it goes into 14, 15 innings. I don't know. Maybe we'll just still stick around. We'll do a marathon episode, Danny, to see the uh, You know what? I'm, I'm here for it, man. I got nothing going on tomorrow. Uh, I'm still recovering from knee surgery. Yeah. Which, by the way, is going well. Uh, Good. I am moving Good. pretty well. I have tickets for the uh, – whiskey q crawl on saturday that's the hockey and, uh, jersey you might game. yeah yeah you might see me crawling but i'm gonna be there it will be at the white uh, house game on saturday, pat hester so is gonna be there me. uh pat hester oh. will be there representing good guys talk back he's making his right first on. appearance at the stadium this year so uh he will be there as well as i'm sure there'll be reach uh, out and meet up with him some yeah there'll be a few other thousand people uh crushing milkshakes wearing hockey jerseys uh post whiskey crawl who knows um you know, I'm, I'm sure there might be some, you know, opportunities to to drop something in one of those milkshakes, make it a boozy milkshake out there during that crawl. They might get a little weird and wild. Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't know about all that, man. Uh, you know, that might be for some folks, but uh, not for me. I'm There'll be, oh, well, Danny, there, there, will, there will be folks. If that's an opportunity, there will be folks trying that, I, you know, and trying I'm to not, figure that out. I'm sorry. I'm so tired of this damn milkshake. <laughs> it's it's I got mean, its own commercial, as uh, Trey reminded us. It's got its own it commercial does. now. I mean, it's, 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 it's absolutely... grown its own entity and identity, and it is uh, uh, yeah, enough, man. Like that That's the biggest selling point they have for this season right now, and it's absolutely atrocious. It's shameful. But I digress. I, yeah. I'll be there either way. I am going to get my... my uh, my White Sox baby blue or powder blue, you know, Royals away jersey, alternate jersey. That that looking, I believe uh, is uh, that logo, sweater. that that color coordination could be from the 1968, uh, the 1968 team, late 60s. I think they had the powder blue. And it the, is. Uh, I'm just. You're just showing just off. It, well, I find crushing. it funny that they bring that 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 uh, that look back now. Oh, After with, all with the whole years. royal stuff. Yeah. No, you I, know, I, just I get you. Seems appropriate, yeah. I guess. Bad optics, uh, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> in, in this game, uh, earlier in the game, uh, really to get the Sox going, Aloy Jimenez with a three-run uh, jack. He also had a single and I think a, a shard of a bat, uh, his bat, uh, oh, got into his My eye. heart stopped. Yeah, I, I – as he was running to first base after he roped that single, um, you know, holding his eyes. I mean, it's like, I don't know if you can pull some sort of optical, uh, if you can pull an eye nerve uh, while running. Uh, so it was, I think, just a shard from the bat. But, um, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I Again, I have zero expectations for Aloy Jimenez. It's great that he's back. I think it's going to take him some time to get into groove if he can get into a groove. But I am no longer on the, you know, oh, if he can stay healthy, he's going to do this, he's going to do that. I'm more of a, he's here, he's in the lineup, I hope he can contribute. You know, I, I, I'm not holding my breath and I have no expectations. No, you know what? I mean, he's got a couple of dingers in the last couple of days. Uh, maybe, your, uh, maybe your 20 prediction is still alive. You think uh, so? He doesn't. Uh, well, he doesn't look like he's moving all that well. I'll say that for you know that much. Uh, we saw him hit one the other day that could have probably gone for a double and didn't. Uh, he was kind of very slow to first and just kind of easy around the bag. 
Uh, and then uh, it was either the next batter or two batters later. We saw him go first to third, but he wasn't moving very hard, very fast. He just doesn't look like he's still 100%. Danny, then, let me know, ask you this. It's a night to this... see the, that shard of bat go in yeah. his eyeball while he cries on first base. It was just, uh, oh, man, just gives you pause. I'm like, how is this guy, not only is he not healthy ever, but now he's going to be unlucky with getting pieces of wood in his eyeball? Yeah, he's going to have to wear goggles, uh, protective goggles, Chris <laughs> Sabo goggles. Uh, uh, there, there's a comment in the chat here about Vaughn and, you know, uh, a comparison maybe to Josh Donaldson or yeah, I, there were a lot of comparisons you know, with Vaughn going as high as he did uh, in the draft. Uh, everybody's talking about Vaughn. What's wrong with this guy? Um, you know, is he broke? Is he, do you have thoughts? Do you, I mean, you know, you come from, you know, a farm system background, a minor league, would it do him well to go down to triple a, is that going to solve things for him? Uh, you know what? They said it in the, in the broadcast earlier today. And I have noticed kind of a lot of the same. He does seem to be squaring up balls here, Mm -hmm. uh, as of late. Uh, he did, he's getting good wood and, uh, I, I might give him. Wow, that's fair. I, might I can't give believe him that just happened. Uh, I'm sorry another. to interrupt, Danny, but like this little this little pop fly that I I, I got to see this again. If Andrew Benatendi was going full bore <laughs> at it, but it kind of like just fell right at his feet, almost thinking it was going to be foul. Was he playing and, on the warning track? Is my question. <laughs> like, where, I guess, where did he I come mean, from? Here, okay, I'm watching the replay right now, and again, if you're catching the audio later. Uh, th- you'll, you've seen this already. That was a loaf. That was an absolute loaf to yeah, get into that ball. Look how deep he's playing. That, that, that was, uh, and that was not a sprint in. So now you got runners at third and second, uh, one out for the Twins. This just screams walk off uh, right here for the Twins. What was that defensive alignment? You got a man on second, and and he was he was uh, hanging out in the first row of the bleachers out there he basically was, was he was like five feet off of the the warning track who's responsible Daryl Boston used to be responsible for the outfielders is Jason uh, bourgeois was he available was he uh in the dugout able to communicate with outfielders? <laughs> he was uh he was uh taking a deuce time out maybe but I don't know but Man, you got a man on second, and it is the bottom of the ninth in a tie ball game. The last thing you want to do is get walked off. So why are you playing so deep? If you're going to beat me over my head, you're going to beat me over my Correct. head. Correct. Correct. But you're not going to beat me with a ball in front of me where you're going to score from second all the way. And that was yeah. just <laughs> dumb. It's luckily luckily for them that that ball was hit so high that the man on second could not take yeah, there, the there was to go there was all the whole- way up on that and i don't think and i and i don't think that was a deke by ben attendee that was just a simple trot in he trotted in for that yeah i I, you know what if you're ever gonna fire up two at a time danny maybe even a cigarette and a cigar at the same time that i'm I'm getting real close because i just fired up that cigar trying not to uh to try not to do the long darts too often here because this team is going to really get me this year. <laughs> I get you. I, I'm just having <laughs> but some fun with you. Yeah. I'm right there. I'm pretty close because that play just about did it for me. I'm, I'm, I'm like crawling out of my skin over here. I don't know if you guys. It's a big strikeout by tell. Steven Wilson. Uh, but, so now we got two outs, bottom of the ninth. Uh, Twinkies end, third and second. Uh, not out of the woods at all. Um, it just feels like it in these situations, Danny, with how this team has been this year. You know, whatever can go wrong will go wrong. They haven't been doing very well for themselves either. It's not like these are a lot of hard luck losses or, boy, we played really, really tough and we just we just got beat. I mean, they've been embarrassing losses. But when you're going that way, when you have a tight game like this, you know, it just feels like it's going to go the other way. It's not going to go the White Sox way. And, and that effort right there by Ben Attendi, man, that spoke volumes. Yeah. Uh, and again, another guy that was brought in, uh, you know, because he was supposed to be a, a decent defender and we were hoping we were going to get the version of him from a few years ago where he actually hit, you know, 20 bombs or so, 18 bombs, whatever it was. And uh, we've seen neither. We've seen neither from him. Matter of fact, we've seen a lackluster effort from the uh, from the guy with the highest paycheck in yeah. White Sox history. And I believe was it you that I saw on Twitter 
kind of posted or, or, or reiterated what somebody else has said that some of these guys that got their paychecks seem to just be mailing it in. They're, they're too comfortable. Yeah, they, got paid you know, and they don't care. I, and, and I, I don't, I was feeling, even, I wasn't necessarily talking about Ben Attendee, but I guess it could apply. And again, I hate to question, you know, uh, how much heart and, and how much love and how much passion and all this other stuff. But it just feels like some of the guys uh, on this, on this team that got, got paid big time early. Like they got mega contracts, mega before they even did much. And even goes back to Tim Anderson, you know, he got paid handsomely before he really even put any time in at the major league level. But you look at Apparently guys like Aloy, to get paid again too. Yeah, Aloy we'll, we'll get into and Mancata. I mean, you you can you can look at uh, you know Yaz and Ben Attendi, sure, and you know the amount of money that they made. I I don't know. I, I know Ben Attendi was dealing with the hand issue still last year, and he claims like it's all right, he's healthy, ready to go. I I don't know what his excuse is this year, but I, I have no like factual stuff to back up. It's just kind of a hypothesis. Of it's interesting to see some guys that. They just, man, they they got huge contracts. Sacks doing their sacks thing, trying to lock up young guys for a long period of time. And it just feels like, well, hey, I got paid. You know, I, it I, don't, does. Have to, I don't have to go, I don't have to go earn that. I already got it. And and you know, and, and again, I'm not we're not ignoring the chat. We just we kind of have an agenda that we're on here. And right now it's about this White Sox game. Uh and that's and a and that's a walk off, and that is a walk off for the it. for the twins. Um, Stephen Wilson, it's John, enough. I believe, with the uh, home plate ump about something. But uh, there you there this you is have my it. answer. This is my answer to the to the people that say, "Why get rid of Pedro Gafal right now? Why? Why? Everybody, everybody wants to say why? Why? White Sox don't they don't want to pay a new manager? And you know." What what difference does it make? You're shifting Charlie Montoya into manager, and maybe you'll right. put Grady Sizemore, who's just a baseball quote coach, quote unquote, uh, in the yearbook. Uh, put him at bench coach. You know, yeah, I, and that's the thing. I, we're talking about a team. Everybody wants to say, "Well, 2024, they're not going anywhere. They're not doing anything." But we're going to see a parade of guys come up from the minor leagues this year, probably more than ever. I was my guess. We're going to see a bunch of young pitching. We're going to see a handful of prospects, and then we're and that's before rosters expand at the end of the year, you know, like we normally would see. And I don't want this guy's taint on these young guys. Th that's Get a great point. Here. Yeah, that, that's that's the thing that I I think is the layer that we're not maybe noticing immediately. It's a lot of the a lot of excuses I've seen from people, and to each their own. This is their thought process. Hey. Fan, how you want to fan? I knew uh, somebody was going to say something about taint in the chat. I, <laughs> <laughs> Ian, thank not you. what I meant, but as soon um, as I said it, I was like, "Oh shit, here it comes." <laughs> um, from the man who said seventy four, he's now talking about taint. Um, so you know, you got people saying as Sox fans, "Well, look, like it, it's not going to do anything." Realistically, look at how horrible this lineup is. Nobody in the world could ever manage a team like this and get them going in the right direction. Pedro can't create miracles, this, that, and the other. You might feel good for a little while that Pedro's gone, but at the end of the day, what is it really? I, I can't, I just can't wrap my brain around that mentality. I mean, that to me is just a lazy loser mentality who you don't know. You know, if you look at a guy like Pedro Grafold, you say, again, I've said this before multiple times, but I guess it's a good moment to bring it up again because of this loss and where the sacks are headed. If you look at him and you say he hasn't been able to do anything that he claimed he was going to do, he doesn't get anything out of his team, you're not going to get rid of all the players. Okay, we talk about that in the we NFL. We know who he is. We, we know who he is. And if he has faith in his managerial abilities, it's like, buddy, what is your managerial resume? Okay, it's only with the Sox, and it's been god awful. So how could you lean on what you've done as a manager? You haven't done anything, and I think the Sox would say help him save face and say, "Guy, if you want to manage again in, in Major League Baseball or hold some other position, we're going to put you out of your misery. We are going to let you go. You can resign, yeah. or, or we're going to we're going to take you out of this because it is getting bad. You go away for a little bit." 
you gather yourself and maybe you come back. I don't know. Maybe the Kansas City Royals pick them back up and, and something in baseball, uh, you know, because they, they seem to have a rich history with him. But, uh, you know, it, it's to say that nothing will change. Look, look at yourself, Danny, and, or anybody, you know, anytime you want to make a change, whether it's a professional change, you're looking to get a new job or something you want to do personally for yourself, uh, lose a couple pounds, eat better, exercise more whatever it is, save some more money. And you look at the broad picture, the yeah, big picture, and, and you're like, oh, wow. Uh, wow, it's so daunting. Why even do anything? Why even try to do anything? Nothing's going to change. You know, I've dug myself in such a hole. One little decision isn't going to make it. It's a, it's a bunch of little decisions. You no, know, it so, happens all the time. You know, if game. you can make one positive step, I think a positive step and get rid of Grafol. Maybe that could be a slowly a domino effect in some other situations. You know, it's one of a lot of other moves that are going to have to be made. If you want to get the right people in place, like you had said, when, when this movement comes up along the lines, I don't think those right, those people are there right now. No, I, well, that's the thing. I'm just, I, you know, we talked about it in the past with, I mean, this is like Tony Larusa 2.0. I didn't want him putting yeah. his stink all over some of the guys that were coming up during his regime. Uh, you know, we talk about a clubhouse that, I mean, I don't know if you caught that that foul territory uh, episode uh, with, with AJ last week here with AJ and Chuck. Uh, I know there was a you know there was a certain part of it that uh, a lot of people talked about, but that whole episode was actually really good and. Uh, you know, they talked about how the the clubhouse it it, it was like Chuck says it, it. There is no mistaking that clubhouse was was fractured. Was the words that he actually used. And even though the White Sox aren't doing anything good on the field, he says that he that's maybe the one thing that he's focused on is putting his clubhouse back together. And that's fine if, if that's really what's happening behind the scenes and that's the one thing they're fixing for the Who, future, who's trying to fix the clubhouse who's trying but, to put it together Grifol? Well, he says pedro is trying to do that but and that's you know, guys are on but, one year deals like they're right, not that's my point next year if you know, you're bringing up these guys that are going to be coming and they're going to come i mean we've already seen a handful of young pitchers come up and they're in the, you know subsequently go back down and no worries yeah. folks those guys yeah. will make their way back up it's just with how the white Sox operate they're going to give all these veterans their opportunities. You know, we're going to have Clevenger coming up here shortly. We're going to have Keller making his way up. Davis Martin, once he's done with his IL stint, gets a couple rehab. They're, they're going to give these guys their opportunities. It's just how they do things. So, so let, but, let, me, let me ask you about these Nistrini guys are then, coming, though. and I don't want, I don't want the the stink of Pedro's dumb ass. Just like we got the stink of Tony Larusa's dumbass and some of these guys, and he created a fractured clubhouse. If you How are we going to fix a fractured clubhouse if all these guys, half these guys, aren't going to be here next year? If you don't think Pedro's the guy moving forward that you're going to build a Keller team with, so and, and, right. you know, and and go beyond, and you might not know who the next manager is necessarily long term, but you got Montoya right there as your bench coach, like Renteria was there for Robin Ventura towards the end of his tenure. And we, you, you just knew when Renteria was hired as bench coach, you knew the leash that Robin That's Ventura true. had. Um, so I, again, I'm not saying Montoya is just going to all of a sudden be the long-term manager, but if you don't think Rafol is your guy, then just get him out of the way. Just, you know what, cut bait. It's like, I, we don't know what the future is, but we'll put Montoya in right now. This is kind of a lost year, but we know one thing. Whatever Grafol was trying to do, said he was going to do, he has not been able to capture that. He hasn't been able to implement it for some weird reason. Of course, guys are getting hurt. Guys aren't, you know, performing. But what are you going to say to me? Oh, well, Grafol can only manage with an all-star lineup and guys that never get hurt. And then he might have a shot at really managing. Well, hell, Come you on. and I you can know? manage a major league ball town club <laughs> exactly. with, a, with a stellar, you know, uh, healthy lineup every night. I mean, that's no challenge. But you know, I I just it's, it's not it's not how can we it's very I said this to you and Ian when we were texting a couple of days ago leading up to this episode. It's very difficult to be serious at all about 
this organization, about what's going on for a lot of reasons. But but the core reason for me is that Pedro Grafol is still employed as a as a manager for the White well, Sox. Yeah. And I mean, in your in your last little rant there, you brought up the fact that, you know, being prepared and that's something that he throws around a lot. It's it's a it, he likes to say, you know, we, we're going to be prepared. We're going to be prepared. We're going to be what all we do is prepare. All we do is prepare. I, I sure shit don't see it. Pardon my French. I know I'm cussing more than I normally do on the show. I like to keep it, you know, a family show. So you and your kids. Danny, the Sox are three and 20. You, you've got but, privilege to maybe loosen up the language a little bit here and there. Uh, dude, uh, if, they if don't look prepared. It, it's they, in they, game decisions. It's, you know, going back to that Maldonado thing, you know, with you're keeping him in for what? Because he puts the right fingers down because he is some sort of, you know, wall behind home plate. He's not. He proved it again here in this Minnesota game on Tuesday night. Uh, he, he's an ex- he's just a joke, you know. And well, so again, uh, what, what is he going to say? Give the veterans their opportunities. What and... is what is Grafol going to really say? I hear that from a lot of people. What can he really say? And I, I don't know what he can say at this point. That's what I'm saying. He is doomed. Like, get get him out of there. Like take the big hook from vaudeville, take the big hook, hook them off the stage. Just say, sorry, bud, we got to protect you, man. Cause, cause the, they're going to eat you alive. Well, a lot of people say, well, there's no point if they, you know, it doesn't matter if they keep them, but you know, so what's the point of firing them? Well, that's, that is my point of firing them. It's, you know, what? you got guys, this guy is not a major leaguer. You want to give your veterans all the time in the in the world to you know you're going to give them every opportunity to figure it out martin maldonado hasn't been all-star martin maldonado in four years before this season so how many opportunities do we need to see that regression is not his friend anymore he is he is in full-on regression it happens there comes a time in your career when you got to say you know what it's time for me to hang it up and if you're not willing to do that you're going to have to be forced into that position yeah, I'd like and to see Pedro Grafal as a manager and Chris Getz as a general manager need to know when to pull the plug. Yeah, it's on Getz too. It's it, it always it goes all the way up to the top. The man who is going to, you know, open up his wallet and and maybe throw two hundred million dollars uh, to get this Southside Stadium. You know, I, I'm I'm willing to open up the wallet to help out here, help the cause. Uh, goes all the way up to him. Uh, we know that, uh, you know, it gets tiresome talking about it, but things that can be controlled and changed, you know, Jerry's not going anywhere. He's not going to sell. Uh, he thinks he's going to live another 10 years. Who knows if his kids hold on to it, what they're going to do. I don't know, but you can get rid of Grafol. You know, I, I don't think Getz is leaving anytime soon unless he resigns and just says, whoops, a daisy. Um, yeah, I wasn't ready for this. Uh, I got the blessing from Jerry, but I, I have future. I, I want to have a future in baseball, and this is not a good start for me unless he believes, well, once you're in the White Sox family, as a lot of people have found out, you're a lifer, right? It's very difficult to get kicked out, as we saw with Kenny Williams, Daryl Boston, even Han, well past his due. So, you know, I – yeah, the, the the performance is horrible, but some of these in game decisions, just like how how the bullpen was managed, this these little things. If you've been watching the games, which is tough to do, I get it, but you're watching the games and you're seeing how they're losing some of these. There isn't any change from the manager; like no lessons are being learned. Yeah, it, it, it it's unfortunate to feel like the same broken record just keeps spinning and that not it does i you know every time i feel like something might change as much as things change it all stays the same and uh you know it's just the white socks away and unfortunately that me, is it doesn't it just doesn't happen and, and as far as this whole freaking stadium thing and i see the chat's kind of picking up on that 1.7 billion dollars they're asking for in public funding before yeah. jerry said he was going to open his wallet and what did you say that number was was reported think, that he I was ready to put in? 200 million he was interested in. So that still in puts that. it at like 1.5, right? Yeah. That they're asking for from the state. Yeah. Which still makes it the most expensive 
state funded ask in pro sports history in the US. The 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 largest ask to be publicly funded in pro sports history. And you want to do it for this team? For this team that you don't even want to invest a, a 150, 200 million in a year to put a product on the field? Yeah. Yeah. Build build a team and then and then we'll worry about a stadium. Um I don't want to give them that. You know, Sylvie, Waddle and Sylvie this afternoon. I just happened to be in the car and, you know, I flipped on the station and there was Waddle and Sylvie. And I don't really listen to a lot of uh, sports radio in the afternoon anymore like I used to. Those guys are halfway decent. Uh, They were talking about this. And it was Tom Waddle who said, you know what? You guys, fans, as fans, need to write your congressmen and your your lawmakers in Illinois and say, we don't, we're not doing it because. The, the, the general consensus is, is they're probably going to get this thing done. They're probably going to get some way. To, they're going to they're going to figure out a way to show the economic impact on the area to get funding. Well, you That's could probably you you could right now you could massage anything to maybe look like something. But we've had enough economists and enough videos and enough blurbs out there recently that explains pretty clearly that there's no backing, there's no proof of a publicly funded stadium invigorating, you know, an, uh, eco- yeah, economic. an, 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 an economic growth in certain areas. It's schools, right. it's libraries, it's parks. That's where your public money is best being used. Uh, a pro sports stadium, th- there's no proof for that, that it's good for, you know, a local economy. No, and you know what? I... To be honest with you, I don't have an issue with the stadium that they have now. Is it is it you know a throwback stadium like every stadium that's been built since there, uh, since uh, you know New Comiskey Park was built back and it opened in 1991. Uh, you know it was that concrete bowl cookie cutter, but you know the renovations, which by the way they haven't had to pay for either. That's all those renovations. I think they have like 36 million dollars mm-hmm. a year that rolled over year after year. So the years they didn't do any renovations, that money rolled over. So that you know, it kind of went into an escrow account. Look, if you so traveled every time they around, did a major inv- renovation, the state paid for that too. If, if you've seen other stadiums, yeah, there are some beautiful stadiums with wonderful skylines and bridges, and you know, quaint little, you know, uh, kind of any town USA vibe that uh, these cities, you know, this village that uh, exists around ballparks now, right? That's how it is. Restaurants, bars, hotels, uh, you know, outdoor concert venues, uh, lots of greenery, all that kind of thing. Sure, all that would be uh, fun and exciting. It, it, exactly. But in terms of actual stadiums, I, I got to tell you, if you're going to be open-minded, and I and I know I'm ex- extremely skewed as a, as a diehard Sox fan, but it, it, has, it has its issues. It's horribly run. The stadium is horribly run. How, how they're how they deal with you know the logistics, just even from getting people into the ballpark to operational stuff, uh, you know, parking, all that kind of stuff. It, it's just horribly run. But the the actual stadium's not bad, not bad no, compared not. to a, a lot of other ballparks that I've been to that are more that have been built more recently that are just dumps. And I don't know who designed them. You know, they, they threw some colorful paint. You know, it's new. It doesn't do much for me. You know, so I get it. It's not in the neighborhood that Jerry wants it. It doesn't, you know, he's not going to, he's not able to, I don't know what he wants to do in terms of building around uh, South Loop Stadium and how he thinks that's going to get him what he wants. I, I don't, I don't know. Um, maybe he even had the opportunity at 35th and Shields. Maybe he was given the opportunity, he said no to it because yeah, he wasn't I, he able knows. to because he wasn't able to get the extra funding, perhaps. Maybe he would have had to put his own money into gobbling up some of those parking lots and, and and open space and and revitalizing it. And he just didn't want to. Yeah. I I, it, it, I mean, knowing we don't really know a hundred percent, but I, history tells us that might be that might be true because he doesn't want to open the wallet you know and and thank you to our wonderful and uh ever so dutiful producer ian eskridge for pointing out earlier in the chat he's 
you know, he did that, that, that Crane's interview earlier this yep. week. And he said mm-hmm. that if they were to have a long-term lease, uh, his kids are going to keep the, the team because, you know, all the reports leading up to now have been saying that, you know, he informed his children that if they want to sell the team when he's gone, they can. But now he's saying, you know, something completely opposite. Uh, if I get this long term lease, which is going to help me be more successful and be able to put more of a, a, a winning product on the field, then my, then my kids might keep it. I, do and, and Ian says, now, do we pray that they don't? get the lease or a stadium because you know if his kids run this thing the way the same way he did we might be in for well it's going to be a lifetime of of reinsdorf run ball clubs there's no guarantee that they're going to run it like him though i mean we saw what happened with the blackhawks um you know and but there is a chance that it could be run just like him i I'm against the public money for a new stadium. I think the way he goes about things is uh, absolutely ass backwards. It is not obviously, there's a lot of factors into why things are the way they are right now, but Jerry has to bear a lot of that, more than a lion's share. Um, I think on the post game, or maybe it was the pre game on NBC Sports Chicago, Ozzy and uh, Chuck were answering fan tweets you know like bring me bring me your questions you know the the great ozzy and chuck and i i I might butcher his last name but uh, he's a really good Sox fan adam i think kunos got his question on the pregame and it was essentially what happened since 2021 How, how did this team go from that okay to to where we are right now and both Chuck and I, well, Ozzy went first and Chuck kind of like backed him up on it. The number one thing they wanted to talk about were injuries, injuries. That That's the reason. Oh, it's injuries. All these injuries. That That's not the number one reason. <laughs> no, that's a reason. I, that's well, a reason. I mean, you can't deny it. But then again, what is anybody doing to change anything about, you know, preventing some of these injuries because that doesn't seem to be happening either again we're not in the clubhouse we don't know what's going on behind closed doors we only know what's been leaked to us and what's been whispered and what's actually been put out in in media but it sure doesn't seem like they're trying to do much to change anything it's the same four five six characters every year with the same types of injuries over and over and over again what kind of changes are being made Again, it goes back to, like you said, where's that accountability? Now, Chuck did say depth, which I agree. That was depth another reason for year. him. I would say, you know, for several years, you know, we just didn't invest in the depth. How the money was being spent was spent incorrectly. Um, you know, some of the crazy contracts that were being given, especially to relief pitching, the, the money that Han did have to spend and allocate, it, it wasn't allocated correctly. You know, we did not have major league ready depth because of all these injuries. You yeah. you think you'd learn a little Almost bit. You better $50 prepare. million dollars on a bullpen. Like, you come know, on now. and then, of course, when it came to, to really invest in premium talent, premium talent at the top of the free agency, you, you didn't go that route. You know, you, you really tried to go cheap, which is no surprise. And um, well, look and at again, some of I don't know organizational how much I blame hires for that and, either. I, I think maybe that was a. That, oh, that, that's edict. not a. That's a Jerry Reinsdorf edict as well, too. Listen, you can you have this is the budget you have to work with, but you can't dole out any long term uh, high, right? You know, high dollar. Right. There, deals there's only some things that Han can even do if it in fits terms. into that budget, you can't yeah, do those, it because those, I'm not going to pay for a guy who doesn't produce. I'm not going to pay a guy over a hundred million dollars for the first time in club history if he doesn't produce. Well, guess what? Now we got Ben Ben Nintendo out yep. there. Doing yeah. uh, doing what he does for the highest, you know, grossing contract in White Sox history. I, I don't like the fact that the owner has these type of edicts. You you be the owner. Let me do my job. But at, anyways, I digress. Sorry. Yeah. No, I, I'm no, on one today, man. I, I'm fired up. I'm angry. Yeah. This is the downside I, with doing it. I episode. hate being a White Sox fan right now. <laughs> more than i ever have this is uh the downside of doing one right after one of these games um here we are we're going to be thinking about you know this this streak we're on uh every win just about has been on a tuesday 
as oh, we, we were on our way, man. Yeah. We were on our way. Yeah. And Pedro mismanages the bullpen. And Ben attendee wow, jogging wow. around and some other stuff. A lot of things happened. Uh, and, that and this collapsed. is a bad. This is a bad Twins team. This yeah, is they're a not good. Very beatable team for the White Sox. They're not good. Um, but you know, as shit it, is the White Sox are. This is a very beatable team. When things are going uh, the way that they're going for the White Sox, as I as I had mentioned, right. when the game was tied, I believe it just it feels like in these situations it's going to go the other way for the Sox because just almost like a premonition you're almost like creating your own destiny and maybe there is a mentality of like that in the clubhouse of i don't know if it was lopez somebody had a quote to do it but someone had a quote a couple a couple weeks or a couple days ago of you know you try to get out of it but sometimes you just don't get out of it yeah danny feel free man um you know uh light it up uh it's it's hot takes and heaters um and there's been a lot of heaters there's been a lot of heaters tonight Cigars, well, this cigarettes. Is, this is this is lung dart number two. I uh, I put the cigar down because you might need a maybe a just a, a pipe, perhaps. Just a. I would like to see. I mean, you maybe know what? St- <laughs> yeah, get me a get me a little uh, Sherlock's home, Doctor Grabal pipe. You know what I mean? I think starting the next episode next week just with a pipe would be nice, um, and then just tr- what's in that? And- what, what kind of pipe are we talking about? What's in that pipe? Oh, just flavored tobacco, whatever you choose. But depending on the topic, depending on how how much it aggravates you and how stressful it is, that's the tobacco you choose, or that's what if it's a you know cigar or a cigarette or a pipe or you know. Yeah, I, well, I, I was just glad car exhaust. I go to the dispo because we'd never make it to the show. Yeah, uh, it's not my thing anymore. It was at one point, but man, yeah, oof, I'd be. I'd be hacking up a lung and sleeping about halfway through the show. So <laughs> uh, we'll figure, l- l- we'll figure me, this thing out. I, I really want to get your thoughts on, on cherry this, Cavendish. Uh, My dad used to smoke cherry Cavendish. Ian. On this, <laughs> what I want—I want to know about Nastrini in, in your mind because this was a this really struck a lot of people. How can they be sending Nastrini down? Why are you sending him down? This is so White Sox. What is the mentality here? Why are we not uh, having him develop in Chicago? What's your take on it? Uh, you know, I kind of threw it out there a little bit earlier in the show, and I'm just going to kind of reiterate what I said. Uh, these types of moves are just, it's, it's a White Sox thing. Uh, you bring them up, you know, and at the very first sign of struggle, they're going to send them down. Now, who knows? Maybe something's going on behind the scenes that we don't know about. There might be some soreness. Maybe uh, Ethan Katz saw something that they felt like he would be better served working on uh in the minor leagues i don't really know but it's a typical white Sox thing you see you know young guys come up and i kind of had a feeling about it this year is when you see these guys come up and you see them sign guys like clevenger you know in the 11th hour or even after the season starts and you got brad keller doing the same thing which you know uh blank name i think it was pointed out in the chat much earlier he does suck but you know he's one of those guys. He's got that blue tie. You know he's got he's he's, he's wore those blue colors in the past, so mm-hmm. they like him. Uh, you know, uh, there's gonna be those guys like Davis Martin, who you know has shown some some really solid promise in the past, but unfortunately is dealing with injury. But those guys are gonna get their opportunities. That's just the way this White Sox organization works. They think these veterans are gonna come in. They're gonna instill that culture that we've been talking about for the last year year and a half uh and unfortunately guys like Nick Nostrini I believe Jonathan Cannon is probably going to see an up and down kind of year uh maybe more than once or twice uh you know any of the young guys that come up are potentially so are you be was it red flags flyer. was it uh alarm bells going off uh, was it anger when he got sent down or did you feel like it was more of the process and this is I think it's no. the White Sox process. Gotcha. It's not necessarily my process. I think I probably would have stuck with him for a little bit. I mean, you know, he was really solid his first game up, right? And then he comes up and he, you know, he has a, he has some struggles afterwards. But they're young, and again, it's a twenty twenty four season. It's not going to uh, amount to anything except for maybe, you know, historically bad. We're already seeing them set records and be on pace for 
like not just historically bad, like, but the worst in a lot of categories by far if they stay on this base, which again I find hard to believe. But I just You're making don't a go know. at it. Yeah, I, yeah. Give them an opportunity. Don't don't say, oh, first sign of struggle. See you later. Bye bye. It was against a Phillies lineup that was really that was a tough lineup. I watched that game uh, in real time, and you know he was missing the zone. He was, and and he was pressing a little bit, and you know, and I think he was, I think he was trying to be a little too cute because it was a fearful lineup. You know, they got some mashers there. I mean, he's, young. he's, he's young. young. You know, um, so that's going to happen. I, I'm not. I it, I didn't think he was broke or well. There there goes the the great Nestrini. Boy, so glad you know we got that guy. Not at all. It's just that that's going to happen. He he needs to go through that kind of stuff, you know. Like like Cannon did was it yesterday? You know he he wore it, man. Would they Twins tag seven on him or something? I mean, his stuff just wasn't working the way it was against the Royals. You know, and again, it's early in the season. Uh, temperatures. I hate to be that guy, but it, I mean, it does play a role. Where temperatures are even for this time of year, typically a little cooler than normal uh, up in Minnesota and here in Chicago, at least uh, today and tomorrow. But, uh, you know, you kind of hope that as guys get some experience, more than a game or two, I'm saying, you know, under their belt, that they settle in. Yeah. You get an opportunity to, to, to feel the way the game plays at the major league level because it's different from level to level. Well, you know? I think it's also important to have a rebound opportunity. You know, right. like like how how can I take, you know, from that last start that I had a bad taste in my mouth. You you got to learn how to rebound. You know, it's because you're going to have that. There's very few times when you go out there. Stone has talked about it. You probably experienced it pitching. I know I experienced it. No matter what level you're in. You definitely feel it in, in high school and college and, and beyond of, man, I just, I have some of my stuff. I don't have great stuff today. You feel it in your bullpen session, you know, before you, you, before you take the field, you know, like, okay, I'm going to have to kind of live off of some of the things that I didn't expect. And maybe my, my fastball, I can't, you know, the arm slot, the grip, something just doesn't feel right. And, and sometimes you have great outings with that. I don't know if it's you're more focused or whatever, but sometimes you get hit around, but you got to get right back out there. You know, if you could, if your arm allowed it and the organization allowed it, you'd want to go out there the next day, right? Just to get that stink out of your just realm of what, what just happened. You know, you, you want to go avenge. And I, I gotta, I gotta think that Nostrini is probably going to try to understand the process, be patient. He knows this is part of the business, but you know, he wants to get back out there and prove himself. I think you muted yourself, Danny. I uh, I did. Sorry. Let me get you. Now, now you're muted again. Now, now you're good. I think we. Uh, I think you were uh, controlling it. I was controlling. Sorry. We were both hitting it at the same time. But yeah, no, I was just kind of piggybacking off what what you're saying is that any guy who's a, a true competitor is going to want that opportunity to hop back on the horns and prove that that was just a fluke. If you go and you hang your head and you don't want that next opportunity, probably not the guy that I want on my roster anyway. And I don't believe that that's Nick Nostrini at all. Yeah. I don't believe that that's Jonathan Cannon at all. Yeah. No, I, 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 I'm excited to see more of Cannon and in Nostrini and, you know, any other arms that come up, this is the time to do it if they're ready. Um, but, yeah, like let, let it play out. Let it play out. I feel like it. I, I get it. You know, um, it's uh, it's part of the white the way the White Sox do it with sending the Strini down, and you know maybe they needed a, a bullpen arm or they wanted to make a different roster move. But I would just like for him to be a part of it for a while and just see what happens. Well, and, and you know, as the season goes on more and more, it feels like we're leaning towards a six man rotation. I, I yeah. just feel like it is. And, yeah. it, you know, because they're they're constantly talking about wanting to give Crochet, you know, an extra day off here. Sure. There. They're constantly talking about giving guys like, you know, Fetty and Soroka a day off. Like, you know, I, fine. 
So go with the six man rotation, but this this up and down frequent flyer mile stuff, I'm just not a fan of. But again, not surprised at all because it's yeah. just what the White Sox do. Their front office, you know, makes decisions. I'm sure there's a group where they sit down and they all talk about what they want to do. This isn't just Chris Getz doing it on his own. And I, I guarantee you that not that entire group, uh, you know, agrees with every move either. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, but you know, at the end of the day. It's what the White Sox have always done, and it's unfortunate, and I don't agree with it, but it, I'm not shocked whatsoever. Well, what the White Sox did today, uh, they got walked off uh, by the Twins. Uh, they are 3-20. and 20. They've got two more with the Twins, and then they go home to take on the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, you will be there this weekend, as I know a lot of people probably will for the hockey jersey and any other stuff that they're giving out. Weather's supposed to be pretty nice Saturday and Sunday, maybe some rain, but mid mid to high seventies. I'm seeing, um, which yeah, uh, looking forward to that. Actually, yeah, Should be really um, really good weekend out of the ballpark. Uh, Danny, we've managed to talk for over an hour now on the Chicago White Sox team. Yeah, Granted, we had a we had a game going on that we were kind of able to pick apart. But as always, thank you so very much, folks jumping in in the chats, the comments. We tried to get as many as we could, um, posted them. You know brought them into our conversations off. yeah it's uh uh all, always meaningful pass this uh, podcast along it's available absolutely everywhere you find your podcasts uh, futuresocks.net uh, subscribe to the youtube channel uh final thoughts my man danny uh yeah so well i mean just going back to to your little your sign off notes there first off i am not uh one who is uh against a shameful or a shameless plug I need all you guys that are in the chat right now to go ahead and smash that like button. It doesn't cost you a dime to do that. We are, uh, we're grinding it out here with a bad White Sox team uh, game in and game out week in and week out. We've got a lot of people uh, putting some great written content out there. We've got at least three uh, podcasts and uh, live streams going on every week. And we're all basically doing it for nothing. Uh, We're doing it just so that we can get some content out here to you guys. So at the very least, Smash that like button. It don't cost you a dime. Uh, you know, if you do want to throw a two dollars a month at us on our Patreon, please go ahead and do that. Uh, you know, it does. There are some expenses to uh, to running a website of this nature, so we'd appreciate it that uh, if you guys could help us out in the least of you know easiest of ways. We got a lot of regulars that come in here week in and week out. So obviously, you guys like us for something. Spread the word. Have your buddies come in. We need the hours watched on uh, on YouTube here to uh, you know get those super chats going, so that maybe uh, if you guys feel like you want to you know help us out, you can do that too. Well, those will be coming up in the future once we get the hours watched. But I do want to say I appreciate all you guys for checking in. Uh, there was for, one for a last three and thing. twenty team, man. I mean, yeah. you know, it's it's just the love that people have. It's uh, it's as ingrained, you know, White Sox baseball. They're not yeah, quitting, dog. and uh, it's. Misery loves company. I've said it many times in different venues and avenues. It's just kind of socks therapy. It's like you just want to rub shoulders with like-minded people. And we're all just shaking our heads and, you know, we're not going to give up. We're not going to just completely abandon. So we're trying to work our way through it somehow. So, uh, yeah, uh, continue to, uh, pass it along, uh, subscribe, like all that good stuff. Uh, Danny Miller at Danny Miller FS, uh, Nick Morawski at Nick underscore uh, GGTB. I think we should do it all over again next week, Danny. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, as much as I have uh, had a chance to rant tonight, uh, I am looking forward to next week. I'm always looking forward to sitting down with you and yep. with everybody in our chat. You guys are awesome. I'm really excited to hear guys. about your uh, game time experience and how that goes on Saturday for you. Yeah, you know, we'll see how the uh, the old knee holds up. Uh, you know, I you may find me sitting in a instead of doing the old crawl around the stadium, you might you might find me sitting in one of the uh, lower deck sections while everybody else that I'm going with does the crawl thing. But uh, either That's way, all right. you're there. I'm in you're it in to win building. it, man. Yeah, you're in the building. All right, so, sounds good, man. Heal up, uh, take it easy. Try to bring home a White Sox winner. I, I got one more thing. I'm gonna yeah. throw. It was asked that uh, we, if we had any new Pedro Grafal quotes this week, I'm gonna throw it out there. We're not even gonna discuss it because we're gonna go ahead and sign off here. But 
I'm going to let you guys go ahead and discuss. You guys chat about it on social medias or hit us in the comments after this uh, this video goes up uh, later on. But uh, here's your Pedro quote for the week. He says, yesterday, I really care about our fans. I truly care about our fans, but I'm not going to throw out there anything that I speak to our players as individuals or as a team. I'm just not going to do it. So you can take what you want from that, how much he cares about his fans or not. And uh, you guys discuss amongst yourselves. We'll see you next week, man. <laughs> that'll be that'll be a good uh, starting point. Uh, for Danny Miller, uh, I am Nick Borowski. Hey, until next time, go Sox.